He is. Oh, wow. That's a bummer. Yeah. I think it's because Nick gives him treats. Oh, yes. That's and not like secret. dog treats. Yeah. All like the time. People treats. Mm-hmm. Oh. Which I will occasionally give Rocky. Yes. But he knows that Nick will give it to him all the time. Mm. Nick, stop it. I know. Stop bribing a dog. Imagine when you have kids. Ugh. He's going to be like taking him to Dairy Queen all the time. And I know. He'll be like, eat your leafy greens. Exactly. I'll be making him the nasty green and berry smoothies. Oh. Do you think kids? I don't think kids could eat smoothies. Maybe. I don't think they would She's want coming to. back to you. Butterfly's coming back to mama. I got her this pink sparkly dress. Did you see the pictures? No. Yeah, but then we took her to the kennel and I didn't want it to get kenneled. So <laughs> we took it off. That's adorable. Yeah. It was, I'll have to show you. It's it, it could be a pageant dress. It has sequins. Fabulous. And ruffles. That's anyway, amazing. Anyway, focus. Do you, um, fruit, fr- fruit flies. <laughs> Since you're a fruit fl- fan, do you want to talk about how to get rid of fruit flies? Yeah. Because I can't say fruit flies. I think that <laughs> is the one. So, don't be embarrassed if you have a fruit fly problem. Because it happens to everyone. And I hate those little everyone. things. We get them at work. Ugh. We don't get them here. We haven't gotten them here. We got the big flies because we like to leave the back door open, but not the fruit flies. Yeah. But you do have the power to do the impossible and get rid of them. So you can arm yourself with few basic tools, which I have actually done at least one of these. Because fruit flies live for eight to ten days, and if it's female, it lays up to 500 eggs at a time. Holy muffin. Yeah. How often do they lay eggs? (laughs) I don't don't know. (laughs) I'm sorry. Um, I doesn't say. (laughs) But I'm the one that found the article. I need to stop asking questions that aren't in the article. All you need to know is that it translates to lots and lots of little fruit fly babies. So there are multiple steps. The first step is to destroy their breeding ground. Where so do they breed? They breed everywhere, but mm. mostly on the surface of ripening fruit. So for the time being, move your produce into the fridge. Fruit flies also spawn in sink drains, garbage disposals, empty bottles, and damp sponges. So be extra vigilant with your kitchen cleanup. I hate damp sponges. I I hate the smell of damp sponges. I, ooh. Yeah, it's disgusting. Even when you've removed the surface fruit flies are attracted to, it's likely there are still fruit fly larvae lurking in the corners of your kitchen, ready to develop into adults. I don't like larvae. I don't like that word. Yeah, there's a lot of words in this one I'm really not a fan of. I'm sorry. It's okay. But in order to break free of the fruit fly shackles, you must kill adult flies. And you can purchase traps, but you can also do your own methods. So apparently there's something called the funnel method, which is taking a sheet of paper and forming a corn-shaped funnel. You seal the funnel with tape and stick it into a jar or wine bottle that's baited with a small amount of apple cider vinegar or a ripe banana. You can place the trap in the most affected area of your kitchen And the flies, not clever enough to realize that they can exit by way of the entrance, will accumulate in the jar. And once you've amassed a nice collection, either spray them with incesticide, or if you're an animal lover and a risk taker, you can release them into the great outdoors. I say kill them. (laughs) I agree. I agree. God made us bigger than them. Right? I am not okay with... You know, the capturing of the spiders and letting it go. It's going to come back. And I have a spider leg on my spider bite like, on my leg. Oh, that's prove a, it. oh yes. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Yeah. That's just like a wuss. Like, hey, we're going to go back to that house because they're not going to kill yeah, us. Exactly. So where did you get the spider bite? Like, It's on my lower leg. So it's like right by my ankle. But where were you when you got it? Oh, I was sleeping. In your bed? Yeah. Have you like fumigated? No. Did you find the spider? No. How are you sleeping in that bed still? I don't like to think about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> and when was this? Um, about a week ago. And your mother-in-law to be made you go to a pathologist? No. She suggested, well, first, actually, she asked me if it had cellulitis, cellulitis growing around it, to which I thought she meant my leg was fat <laughs> with cellulite. <laughs> so, she said, hell no, bitch. I know. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> She was like, oh my gosh, really? I was like, I don't know, cellulite, cellulitis, it sounds the same. It does. So when I went to work today, I knew a patho- we have many pathologists there, and I asked one of them to take a look at it, and he used the word cellulitis, so I was glad I at least knew the definition. <laughs> but he poked around it. Did that hurt? No. Okay. Which was good. 
What kind of spider was it? I don't know. He couldn't tell you by no. the bite? But it's big. It's like... Are you going to lose a leg? Probably not. Probably not? Yeah. You kind of need the leg. I know. It is important. <laughs> so hopefully... Wow. I'm more concerned about spiders crawling out of it. Oh, heavens to Betsy. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah. It, Ew. There was this um, book that I read when I was younger. Oh, and it was called Scary young. Stories. Yeah. Too and, young to read stuff like that. Yeah. And there was this story about a woman who got a boil on her face. And when she went to the doctor's office, they, like, did something and spiders came out of it. And there's a, like, picture. I can still see it. Spiders crawling out her face. And now I'm scared all the time. Let's talk about the next method of getting rid of fruit fruit flies. I don't want to talk about spiders with you ever again. (laughs) So. I'm going to have nightmares. Yeah, probably. I'm going to call you in the middle of the night. (laughs) Ever. (laughs) All right. My apologies. (laughs) This is the method that I used. Okay. So this is the plastic wrap method, and it says to put apple cider vinegar in a small jar of small jar of bowl, jar or bowl probably. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> in a small jar or bowl, <laughs> and add a few drops of dishwashing liquid. Cover the vessel with plastic wrap, flas, blah, blah, But you have to call it a vessel. Yes, cover the vessel with plastic wrap. Fastened with a rubber band for extra security and poke three or four holes in the plastic. The fruit flies will not only be trapped, but they will also be destined to drown, which I think is That sounds like reasonable. murderous. I'm okay with it. Okay. The soap in the dishwashing liquid alters the surface tension of the vinegar so that instead of landing on the surface, the flies fall in. See, I would have actually preferred that. All I did was put some apple in a bowl and covered it with plastic wrap and watched them die. I would have rather had the dishwashing thing to watch them just suffer drown drown in the soap are you sure you want to have kids <laughs> <laughs> i never said i wanted to have kids oh goodness All right. <laughs> how about that five second rule do you do you abide by the five second rule? i do it depends on how good the food is and it depends on where yeah it does depend on where because you work in a hospital i do you gotta be careful yeah i don't need things off their floor i don't need MRSA. no MRSA. Mm, no Mm-mm. c diff it's not good stuff yeah there's almost nothing worse than getting ready to take a big bite of a bacon cheeseburger and then dropping it right on the floor. But if being a kid taught you anything, it's that if you pick it up before counting to five, it's safe to eat. Yep. I mean, it's the five second rule. Everyone right? knows about it and just has to be true, right? Well, this article is addressing this five second rule. And if it's if it's legit. Well, actually, it kind of is right. Two studies... They did studies on the five-second rule. I need a new job because <laughs> I want to do studies on the five-second rule. I don't know. Anyway, two studies. One performed in 2007 at Clemson University. That's a reputable school. And a new one from Aston University in England showed that, yes, the quicker you get to some food down, uh, get to some down food, the better chance there is not a lot of bacteria on the food and if you get to it under five seconds usually germs probably haven't had time to transfer to your food that's amazing yeah of course this all depends on a variety of factors first moist i hate that word but i said it (laughs) moist foods like deli meats will become contaminated quicker than dry foods like toast if you drop that sandwich for more than five seconds throw that meat out but at least the bread's okay what good is the bread without the meat i know right that and you're vegan, sense. right? Yeah. Carrie. Jeez. Also, the type of floor can make a huge difference in how quickly that food gets contaminated. Believe it or not, carpet is less filthy than tile or laminate floors. One study showed that salmonella transferred from carpet in less than 1% of case studies, while hardwood floors transferred 70%. Whoa. All of a sudden, I want to go clean my hardwood floor. Yep. Yeah. And then, however, don't let your this fool you into thinking you're just fine eating food off the floor because it doesn't take much bacteria to make you sick. You know how small cells are, right? We all know cells we are do. small. Well, yes. only 10 cells from certain types of E. coli are enough to kill you. That's drastic. <coughs> yeah, just a little. <laughs> wow. Woo. So, believe it or not, it turns out women are more likely than men to eat food dropped on the floor. That shocked me a little bit. I think it... I wonder if it depends on if they're a mom or not. 
Maybe. Because especially a mom of multiple kids. Right. Like, have you ever seen the moms that, like, just, like, grab things that their children have, like, spit out? No. I mean, I worked at Radio yes. Shack once, and this kid had, like, a saltine cracker that just, like, threw up on the ground, and his mom just picked it up. She's like, do you have a garbage? And I was like, ew. No. Go out there. <laughs> Throw it outside. It's gross. Throw it outside. I don't ew. get it. Ew. Yeah. No, thank you. All right. Let's talk about this one last story, and I'll let you take the lead. Oh, God. Food. <laughs> I love food. Me too. And I don't like, I'm not liking this number one situation here. So, five food mistakes that won't let you lose weight. I'm sorry, Amber. <sighs> I'm so sorry. So, if you've been watching what you eat and working out so hard that you can barely get out of bed, but you're still not seeing the exact results you want, there may be a reason. Actually, there apparently are five. <laughs> but lucky for us, they're you really said easy that to fix. Perfectly. <laughs> I have pageant practice. There you go. So number one is steer clear of coffee. I don't like this. Breathe. Just breathe. Deep breaths. First, Why? Because I love coffee. <laughs> so first, if you're stressed, your body will react. Stress produces cortisol, which hurts your body's ability to digest food. And if your fix to stress is coffee, we've got some bad news. Coffee can produce cortisol, too which means double the hormone, and therefore double the amount of body fat your body will store. Instead of coffee, try detox teas. No. <laughs> I refuse. I see. Yes. <laughs> I see. It's not okay. How about <sighs> the next one? Maybe this one you will agree to. I'm okay to. with this one. All right. This one is sit down to eat. So don't eat all your meals on the go. Although it's great for time management, it's not great for your digest digestive system. So take a second to sit down and eat, and this will help you digest your food. That's Slow down. I think we're all moving a little too fast. Yeah. Well, I've also Don't heard slow that down if you're in the left lane or the HV lane. Yeah, but no. When you're eating, slow down. Exactly. When have, I think I've heard something where if you're sitting, you're more likely to take your time and you're more likely to realize that you're full, mm -hmm. as opposed to if you're standing or moving. That makes complete sense to my brain. And I'm okay with this one, too. Drink lots of water. You have to hydrate. And this doesn't mean two glasses of water a day. Without water, your body will slow its digestion, di digestion down and in turn store more fat around your belly. So make sure you're drinking around eight glasses of water each day. How many glasses have you had today? I have had four water bottles of 24 ounces each. And a glass of water is eight? Yes. So that's a lot of water, Amber. Have I you know. been peeing a lot? Yeah, a little bit. It's kind of clear. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. I only had four glasses of water. I need to step it up a notch. <laughs> All right. Oh, eat nuts in moderation. There is a proper way to eat nuts because they're so high in fat. <laughs> and that's in moderation. Also, if you soak them... Soak your nuts in warm water overnight, and it will help to neutralize the phytic acid, which can cause irritation in your digestive tract. I Good to know, know. I didn't know they could irritate you. I didn't. Nope. I never heard that. FYI, nuts can irritate your digestive tract. You really like talking about nuts. <clears throat> I do. I, your face just lit up. <laughs> Dear Lord. So anyways, choose the right fat. And speaking of fat, some fats are your friend. Foods that are high in omega-3s help boost your metabolism and give you energy. Keep you fuller longer so you won't be reaching for those naughty snacks when that 4 p.m. slump hits. And I think avocados are one of those yes. fatty acids. Right? I know. what. Are, yeah. And like peanut butter. Yes. I almond butter. Peanut butter. But I, uh, all in moderation. I'm not good That's at moderation with peanut butter. Yeah. I could eat a whole tub. Why can't I lose weight? <laughs> Oh, well, Amber, thank you so much for stopping by again. Of course. Do you feel better now that you've I had do. some girl time and some wine time? And puppy time. And puppy time. Yes. She's fallen asleep. I know. She We're so boring to her. <laughs> and you'll be back. I will. And you're going to tell Carrie to be safe because, yes. well, I don't want to give away too much, but Carrie needs to be safe. <laughs> the next time Carrie's on the podcast, we're going to talk about it because I don't want to give anything away, but... yeah. That girl needs to she, walk around with bubble wrap. Exactly. A white helmet. Maybe. Bubble wrap. It's all good. <laughs> yes. All right, Amber. Well, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. 
Thank you guys so much for listening. You found us once, but can you find us again? Make sure and check out our website at two girls and a bottle of wine.com. You can listen to us on Podbean, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Rocket.